Hey guys, my name is Scubby. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 3 games on your PC. This is going to be a nice quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. On screen right now you can see me playing some Castle Crashers and I'm going to be switching between Tech and 6 for on screen gameplay. I previously made a video on this and that video currently has over 100,000 views which is insane. But the emulator has changed a little bit since then. I've had a lot of people asking me to make an updated video. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be doing an updated version of this that's going to look more recent. And I'm also going to be going a bit deeper into some of the steps. So let's get right into this. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is needing to open up our web browser. And we're going to be looking at a couple pages and there's a couple things I need to show you before we jump into this emulator. So the first thing we'll be looking at is this website, and this is the RPCS3. And RPCS3 is the emulator we're going to be using to play PS3 games on PC. It is 100% free, but this page is going to show the recommended specs and the minimum specs you will need to be able to run this emulator. So I'm going to say you basically need the recommended specs. With the minimum specs, nothing is going to be playable, nothing is really going to work. So what they recommend for your CPU department is at least a quad-core Intel from Haswell or higher, at least a hexa-core AMD, pretty much any Ryzen line should be good for this, a Vulkan-enabled AMD or NVIDIA GPU, so you are going to need a somewhat decent graphics card, I would say at least 2GB of VRAM would be the minimum of that department. They recommend at least 8 gigs of RAM or greater, I have 16 on my current machine so I should be fine. You want at least Windows 7 Plus and it has to be 64-bit, or a Linux-based 64-bit system. We are going to need a PS3 update file. I'll be showing you how to get that in a few minutes. For Windows requirements, you are going to need Visual C++ 2015, and you are going to need Microsoft's DirectX end user runtime. Of course, I'm going to be leaving a link to this website down below so you can click into these and we can download everything here separately. So now that we've that out of the way, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the compatibility list. And here is where you can see all current games for the PlayStation 3, and it's going to separate them into a couple different states. So we're going to have all of our states here. We're going to have playable, in-game, intro, loadable, and nothing. And these are going to determine how well certain games will run in this emulator. So games that have a playable rate are going to be able to play 100% true. In-game are only going to get into the in-game state. Some might have glitches, graphical glitches, or some might have bigger in-game bugs that could break the game completely. Intro means it just gets to the intro sequence. Loadable means it might get to the main menu, or it might just load past the booting screen. And nothing, of course, means nothing. So I'd recommend checking this out. If there's certain games you're only downloading this emulator for, come here to check them out. So as you can see in the starting screen, I played Castle Crashers. So what I'm going to be doing is clicking the C card right here, which will bring me to all games with C in the starting place. I'll come to the Castle Crashers right here, and you can see Castle Crashers is 100% playable. So now that we have all that information out of the way, we're ready to download our emulator. So we're going to be coming to this download link. I'll leave links in the description down below as always. And for this, we're going to be coming to this page, and we're going to be looking for the latest download for Windows. In this case, is what operating system I'm using. So I'm going to be clicking this open. It's going to open up the app fair page and from here we're going to see our downloads at the bottom what you're going to be looking for is the rpcs tree and then you're going to be looking for a windows 64.7z file so this is going to come in the .7z format so we are going to need winrar or 7zip to extract this software i'm not going to be going over how to do that exactly in today's video but i'll leave links to winrar and 7zip in the description down below and we're also going to need our ps3 update file so this we can get directly from sony links to this in the description down below as well and we're going to be downloading the latest version which is 4.82 so all you want to do is come to this link click download and then we'll get our ps3 up that pop file which we're going to be using to install in our emulator so once you have all your files downloaded, move them to a location where you can find them easily. I currently have mine on my desktop. So I have my RPCS3 emulator here that's extracted into this folder. And I also have my PS3 update file in this folder. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is opening up our folder with all of our extracted contents from our RPCS3. So this basically mimics the basic setup hard drive of a PlayStation 3. We have a couple different things right here that we're going to be coming to later. But the first thing I'm going to be doing is opening up our emulator and we're going to be installing our firmware. So what you're going to be looking for is your RPCS3 application file. It should be about 32 megabytes and we're going to be double clicking to running this. What we're going to be doing is clicking say I have read this quick start guide and we're going to be clicking continue and just going on from here. Now this is going to be the basic UI for our emulator. It's pretty basic right now. It'll probably be updated more in the future. But if we look at our log at the very bottom, this is where we're going to get a lot of information. It's going to tell us if certain issues happen. It's also going to give us when we start up this emulator, the specs of our computer. And it's going to give us some other information that I'd recommend keeping an eye on later on. So for now, we're going to be installing the firmware, which we downloaded from Sony previously. To do this, we're going to be coming to file. We're going to be clicking install firmware. We're going to be locating to where our firmware is. So currently mine is on my desktop. 
it's in the folder ps3 firmware and it's the ps3 up that dot pub file that we got previously what you want to do is click this click open and then your firmware will start to install you'll get this little message here so what we're going to have to do is wait for this to install and then your firmware will install from here it should say successfully install ps3 firmware and lle module click ok and then it'll start to compile your ppu modules now this can take a little bit of time depending on your pc so don't be afraid to be a bit patient with this this process in total took about two minutes for me so your mileage may vary so once your firmware has installed we're basically ready to start loading and playing games so what I'm going to be doing is closing down our folders right now and we're going to be looking at two games I currently have installed. So with a PlayStation 3 emulator, your PlayStation games can come in two different file types. They can come in a disk file and they can come in a PKG install file. So I currently have both of these file types here. Tekken 6 is going to be in a PlayStation 3 disk file and Castle Crashers is going to be in a PKG install file. So you can see how these file types differ. PlayStation 3 game disk files will have a PS3 game, they'll also have a PS3 update file if there's an update, and they'll have a PS3 underscore disk dot SFB. Now these games will have to move in a second and I'll be looking at these in a little bit. And then on the other hand we also have games in a PKG file, these will usually be downloaded from the PlayStation Store, but for this case we're mainly going to be seeing PKG files from PSN Store files. These can also work for PS1 classics, so if PS1 games were re-released on PS3 for downloadable content, they'll most likely come in a dot pkg file and that's the two type of games and i'm also going to mention i'm not going to be showing you in today's video where to download games games are really really easy to find a quick google search will help you out it's actually surprisingly shocking how easy it is to find ps3 games some of them may come in torrent files but for the most part you can download them from google drive or mediafire but i've showed you step by step how to do everything so the first thing i'm going to be doing is installing a pkg file so i'm going to be closing both of these folders down for a second and i'm going to be reopening up rpcs3 to install a pkg file we're going to be coming to file we're going to be clicking install pkg and then we're going to be locating to where our pkg file is so currently mine is on my desktop it's in my castle crashers folder and it's castle crashers.pkg click open and then your pkg file will start to install click ok and then your currently installed pkg file should show up here in your ps3 now some games will come with a fixed file and dlc which you can install also so i'm also going to be doing that here we're going to be coming up to file install pkg and there's also two more pkg files inside this file so i'm going to be installing the dlc first and then i'm going to be going back up to file install pkg and i'm going to be installing the dlc fix so depending on the game you have, sometimes they will have a fixed file that it won't run by default. So I'd recommend playing around with this, installing a PKG, seeing if it runs, installing the fix. It depends on the game you're getting, so this is a little bit of trial and error. But this is the basic setup of how you install PKG files. So now that we have all our PKGs installed for Castle Crashers, what we're going to be doing is testing it. We're going to be double clicking to run Castle Crashers. This may take a couple of minutes depending on your computer, so just be a little bit patient. And then after a couple of minutes of loading, your game should finally open up and it should work perfectly fine in PKG files like this. As you can see, Castle Crashers is running just fine. Now you may notice Castle Crashers is actually running in Japanese. We can change this pretty easily in our PlayStation. By default, your PlayStation will be in Japanese. So to change the language on your PlayStation, what we're going to do is come to Configuration, Coming to System, and we can change the System Console language from Japanese to English. And we can change a bunch of other settings in here, but the main thing you want to do is change this to English. Click Save, and if we reopen Castle Crashers, you should see it's now in English. So what we're going to be doing is reopening up our RPCS3, and to load our other type of game, what we're going to need to do is click the disk icon on the top left. We're going to need to locate to where our game folder is, so currently I have Tekken 6 right here. What you want to do is select folder, and then your RPCS3 will start to compile the PPU modules. Once again, this can take some time, so I'd recommend being patient. Once your game has been fully compiled, it should start to load up automatically and it should show up just here. As you can see, it's already running just fine. Like I said previously, depending on your computer will depend on how well this game runs. But like I said, I'm already recording currently, so the frame rate's going to be a bit lower than it normally would be. But this game runs really, really well on the simulator. To boot recent games is also really easy. What you can do is click on File, Boot Recent, and then it'll show you recent games it's currently booted. Now another thing you may also want to do is configure and set up a gamepad. To do that what we're going to do is come to configuration, we're going to be coming to pads. If you have a PS4 controller it should be able to connect automatically with DualShock 4 and if you have it plugged in it should all work just fine. 
click OK, and then if we reopen Castle Crashers one more time, I currently have my PlayStation 4 controller plugged in, so it should work just fine and be picked up just like a PS3 controller. And it works really, really well. I'm using my controller right now. Everything feels really smooth. It is running at 30 FPS, but I think this game is capped at 30 FPS, but it still works just fine. We're going to be closing this down. And of course, you can play around with some more settings if we come up to configuration one more time. We can come up to system. We can play around with some audio settings right here in the X audio and open AL. So if you're having some troubles with X audio, I'd recommend changing to open AL. And one more time, we can come over to our GPU and you can play around with your render options. You can change from open GL to Vulcan. So if you're having some trouble with either of these, you can play around with these. We also have more options to play around with your resolution. I'd recommend experimenting with this, see what works for you. Just play around with these. It really depends on the spec of your computer. Just if you're having trouble with a lot of graphical glitches, try changing from OpenGL to Vulkan. And if you're having some audio trouble, try changing from X Audio to OpenAL. Like I said before, we also have some input and output settings, system and network, but I kind of showed you the main settings. The rest you can experiment with if you want. But for the most part, it's pretty easy to set all these up. Anyway guys, it's that easy to play PlayStation 3 games on your PC. Once again, the log here at the bottom is going to be your friend if you're getting any major issues. Try Google search some of your log files or you can go to some forums, see if anyone else has had your issue or drop your logs in the comments down below, see if anyone in the community can help you out. But anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal also if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. I make everything over on the channel here for free. I put a lot of work into all my videos. So if you enjoy them and you want to support me to keep making them, I'd recommend checking that out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.